Hi everyone, and welcome to another video from Dental Courses International. Today I will be talking about ad, um, how to extract a to anger impacted third molar. For a beginner, sometimes these angulars they look easier on the X-rays and mesioangulars and horizontal impactions, and they think you can just simply elevate it from the mesial and it will all come out straightforward. It's one of the most common impactions that can get, you know, get you in trouble if you don't have enough experience. And they can be very tricky and complex and complicated as well. So the way I tackle them is I um, gutter the buccal bone as shown in the green line, just basically to remove the cortical plate or part of the cortical plate and access the cancellous bone, which is softer. And my distal angular section, you can see it on the red line. So basically, we're removing the distal quarter of the crown, which is locked under the ramus. And then we elevate from the mesial, as you can see in the red ar arrow. It's a very common mistake where your distal angular section is more towards the mesial, weakening the mesial portion. So what happens after you remove the distal part and you attempt to elevate from the mesial? the mesial portion of the crown will crack as you can see on the red line and if this happened and you lost the whole crown it can be very hard to see the roots on this kind of impaction and add to it not doing a deep enough gutter this can happen very easily so always remember with your section to make it as far distal as you can and try to keep the mesial portion of the crown nice and strong and intact. So now go into the live surgery. So um, I start with sulcar incision. I extend my mesial sulcar incision all the way between the 6 and 7. I don't do any mesial relieving incisions. The reason is it limits you. So if your surgery became complicated and you want to extend your flap, you are only limited or you are limited by how far your mesial vertical incision is. But if you don't do any incision mesially, you can extend it as far as you want later on if you need to. So make sure your blade goes deep enough into bone. And for the distal relieving incision, always your blade has to be resting on bone. So it doesn't slip into the lingual or the lingual area where there is a lingual nerve. So feel the ascending ramus, and then I stretch it, and then I cut towards my finger. It's a very risky to do it this way, and as my friend Kalyan mentioned before, it's best to have a retractor or a mirror there if you don't have enough experience, so you don't cut your finger. It's a very nice tip that I learned from Dr. Anthony Go that you use your explorer to cut all the fibers before reflecting the flap. This will make reflex reflection of the flap much easier. So I'm just running my explorer to cut all the fibers and then very slowly working with my mucoperiosteal elevator to reflect my flap. There's a bit of infection in this area so it can be a bit hard to reflect sometimes. It can be a bit friable as well so you gotta be extra careful not to tear your tissues. If you tear your tissues it's gonna be harder to reflect and harder to retract and then harder to stitch and close as well. So always nice to try to keep it as intact as you can. So you're doing a full thickness flap, so make sure you reflect all the periosteum so you can retract it really well while you're guttering. So in this technique, we're not reflecting any lingual flaps. I'm just feeling around the crown there to see how far it's locked. But we're not intending to reflect any lingual flap. Because in 15% of patients, the lingual nerve can be looping a bit higher than usual, which can be easily cut if you reflect a lingual flap. So I'm just using my curette to remove some of the granulation tissue from the infection. 
The good thing about the infection is sometimes make your gutter a bit quicker because actually destroying some of the bone in this area. So I'm using a surgical brown bear. So if you can notice, if you notice that the large suction, the blue one, she is not on, it's just there for retraction. And the green surgical suction is the only one that's working at the moment. And always get your DA to rest the suction on the distal side of the gutter. And this will make it easier for you to see. So all the saline is going toward the distal. And try to start always from distal to mesial. So how deep your gutter is, I always say is as deep as, as long as you can see bleeding, that's deep enough. So when you see bleeding, that means that you have removed the cortical and now you're into cancellous vascular bone. The reason you want to get into cancellous bone because it's softer and it will allow some movement for the crown. If you are still in cortical, it will be very hard to move the tooth or the crown. So now we start the these two angular sections. So probably you have to position yourself a little bit um, behind and to the side of the patient. So I'm using the same round bear. Some people might want to use a high speed 45 angle. But in this case, I'm just de demonstrating the case from start to finish using a surgical handpiece in a surgical motor with a round bear. So work yourself through the enamel, then undermine the enamel and work yourself from the dentine upward. This will be easier to cut. So as you can see, I am trying to um, keep as much of the crown misery as I can. And then breaking this distal portion that we sectioned. And then what I'm doing now is just because I have access to the distal cortical bone, I'm just extending my gutter a little bit on the distal. So tunneling the gutter under the tissues. And my assistant is using the green suction. She's doing some suction and she's also reflecting or sucking the tissues a little bit towards the distal so I can see more. So always get your DA to be switched on. Show her the videos and just show her where to place her suction. So I did a quick point of application um, on the mesial and then very slowly working my straight luxator. So I'm doing clockwise and anti-clockwise both directions and see which direction is giving me more movement. Then I'm coming from the buckle. I'm not pushing towards the lingual, so I don't raise the lingual plate. I'm basically rotating the luxator upward. And now it's moving. But that's the tricky thing about these two angles. They can be very tricky. They move, but they don't want to come out if they are still locked distally. So I'm engaging my crier into the forcation and resting on my on the buccal bone and very slowly rolling the tooth upward and slightly towards the distal as well. So a bit of rotation and it's coming out. So now we can look at the section together. So you can see um, Most of the crown is intact on the mesial, so it doesn't crack, and you can see that's where the lock used to be, and that's where the distal, I would say, quarter or distal bevel of the crown is done. So I'm just using my curette now to clean some of the granulation tissues on the distal and the buckle. So following those simple principles, Making sure your gutter is deep enough into cancellous bone. Making sure when you're doing the distal um, sectioning that you're still preserving the mesial part of the crown. Make sure that you put a small point of application on the mesial and then everything should be more straightforward after that. So I place one incision on distal 7. The reason I place it only one distal 7, if you place it towards the middle or towards the end, this papilla will end up rolling down and you end up losing a lot of attached gingiva distal to the seven. But if you do it this way, you'll always make sure you have nice keratinized tissues around the seven and distal to it. And I don't like to stitch anything more distal 
because we don't know where the lingual nerve is and there is always a chance that you can catch it with your stitch so that's for me is enough wound closure I don't have I don't need to close anymore so in the next part of the video I'm showing and on the same patients we're doing an upper eight as well I already have another video explaining in details how to extract upper eights in few seconds so I'm not going to comment on this part but please free feel free to watch it and if you want me to explain how it's done watch my other video on the upper eights in the meantime I hope you enjoyed that video and if you like the video please share it or write a comment write a question if you are interested to attend any of our live patient training please send me a message or leave me a comment thank you for watching and if you have any question please do not hesitate to ask me thank you very much